listening to this podcast. My name is Shauna Jones. Today, we will be talking about serial killers, how they are made, and what goes on in a serial killer's mind. Now, let's start our conversation on serial killers. When you hear the word serial killer, you think of a monster, right? Truth is, they're just a person who suffers from mental illness brought on from a type of trauma. Many people suffer from hereditary mental illnesses that can go undiagnosed and can be triggered from a traumatic event. To help further explain my theory, I will be using Michael Madison as an example. Michael Madison is famously remembered for the murder of three young women. These women's names are Sherelda Terry, Santasha Shaylee, and Angela Dixons. Michael was arrested on July 19th, 2013, after Terry's body was found. The body of Terry was found in Madison's garage behind his apartment. Michael was dating at the same time he was killing. Darby, one of the girls Michael was seeing and living with, asked him what the rotting smell in the apartment was. Michael told her that two raccoons had died in the closet. Even though Madison killed these three women, Madison had problems going on in his head. But because Madison was a serial killer, doesn't mean he didn't have a past. So let's go back and look how Michael was raised and how he became himself. Diane Madison gave birth to Michael on October 15, 1977. As soon as Michael was born, the trauma began when his father denied him and never became a part of his life. Madison's mother was not equipped to take care of him at all. Diane would rarely allow Michael to be around other children. Holidays and birthdays went by without Madison celebrating them. The only relationship Madison had was with his mother and numerous boyfriends of hers. Madison started to get abused at the age of two. Family services found out that Diane had stuffed food down his throat, causing him to vomit. When two-year-old Madison vomited up the food, his mother then put him in a tub of hot water. Madison began to scream and cry. So Diane took him out and began to beat him with an extension cord. After this, Michael Madison was a frequent flyer at Matt Siena Hospital. Due to Michael being so young when the abuse happened, he can barely remember it. Although he can recall one time when he was trapped in a long room with one of Diane's boyfriends. Even though Michael cannot recall the traumatic abuse that happened to him, physiology experts believe that the lack of nutrition and relationships with adults led him to make an alternate world in his head where he can control his life. All the abuse fueled his hatred towards women. Michael regularly lashed out on female authorities. By the age of 16, Michael began to get into lots of trouble. At 20, he went to jail for drug abuse. Michael then later began his serial killings. All this information we have so far is already three signs of a serial killer, which are poor family life, child abuse, and substance abuse. Serial killers are horrible people, but behind every serial killer, there is a story. Yes, there's no reason to kill a person, but to a serial killer, there is. A serial killer is someone who has a mental illness and needs help. They're not born this way, as many people assume. They are made by many different factors, which may consist of antisocial behavior, arson, torturing animals, poor family life, childhood abuse, and etc. This is a problem that the world is facing. People look at the signs of a serial killer and just think that they are a weird person, not that they are having trouble in their own mind. We need help to widen the scope of people who 
know the signs of serial killers so more people can recognize and help a serial killer. Knowing the signs may also help save a life.